Hello and welcome. Welcome back to the very last match of the tournament. The very last stream of the very last match, in fact. Whew. And we are up against a wall here, along with Joe, who has lost the first three games. So if he loses just one more game, the tournament is over. So theoretically... We could just have one game tonight, which would be very depressing. Or we could have four, and what could be the most remarkable comeback of the tournament? Probably not. It's going to be hard to win four in a row. But, Joe is very good. Unfortunately for him, Kimo has been better so far in the first three games. Uh, I'd say, um, quick recap. Joe hasn't been playing that well. Um, made some key mistakes in a few of the games. Um, and I'd say Kimo has been playing well. Two of those combined result in what we've seen so far, which is Kimo three wins in a row. Joe had a very late advance in the first game. Didn't get any eco damage early on and instead got himself some eco damage by losing two villies. And then had a bad army composition and ended up taking just a lot of bad fights and it, game one was never close game two was closer joe probably went too heavy on water had to delete a ton of ships and then had an attack that was kind of suicidal lost all of his catapults all of his elephants and then was never able to recover from that and then in game three had oh, had the trolliest of trade routes one could ever see, getting like 28 gold a trip when he could have done it as long as he wanted, essentially. And then was not careful enough with his Titan Gate and lost it and lost the game. So, Ghost Lake, Fields of Punishment, Alfheim, and Marsh are the last four maps of the match. We've got those on the screen for you. Ghost Lake, I'm going to say... Ooh, that's going to be tough for Joe to win as like a set here because you don't get a lot of value out of set as far as animal conversions on Ghost Lake just because there's generally not a ton of hunt. But if there is only one gold mine in the base, if Kimo goes raw, you could have a hard time getting a second gold mine. Um, you could almost see an Isis by Joe on Ghost Lake. Probably a raw, though Kimo could maybe switch it up and go... Oranos instead. Huh, but we don't know. Well, we shall see in just a little bit. We'll get going. Um, just a minute here. Yeah, that's, if Kimo wins game four, I mean, well done to Kimo, but it's going to be a little disappointing to have a four game final. Um, but So hopefully we'll see Joe win a few games tonight. I really don't care who wins. I just want Joe to win a few games. So that way we can have more than one. Um, tonight, so we'll see. So uh, let's uh, just get right into this. Joel, the very end of his rope. Remember that first place gets 350, second place 250. That's dollars. So there's there's a lot of money on the line here. A um, hundred dollars difference, depending on if you win or lose. So, who we are about to find out. So I think everything looks good. I got my mic on, I got my sound on, and we are ready to go into game four. I'm thinking we're gonna see Set v Ra. Could be Isis v Ra. We shall see. Now there are seven games here. May or may not be seven. I'm hoping there are. But we're going to go into game four right now. Ra, Vira. Okay, okay. Yeah, this isn't the greatest of set maps. And as a result, we have Joe playing Ra. Now, hard to beat the king of the Ra, being Kimo, as Ra yourself. So it's going to be tough for Joe to win this game. Uh, we do have a starting Orox. Just one. So the decisions to be made. Oh, he sees the hunt over here. Who five hunt. Uh, does he get hunting dogs? I think you do. Both are getting hunting dogs. Yeah, we've got five caribou, some berries, 
goat, polar bear. Uh, I think it's pretty, yeah, this is very, uh, pretty low hunt. We do have two hunt packs. This could actually just be one. Um, but we do just have one starting hunt as well, just one Aurochs. So yeah, this is pretty, pretty light on the hunt uh, when it comes to Ghost Lake. We're also looking at town centers here on the map. We got the one, both of back town centers, kind of ish, you know, pretty standard. And then the other one will be a little bit forward. This one's a little bit forward, a little bit dangerous position, but very important because it does protect this gold mine there. So that's a very important town center. It looks like Kimo's closest gold mine is actually in front, though theoretically behind his forward town center. But, hmm, I mean, it's risky to go forward, I would say, but as Joe here, you almost have to. And you are facing an enemy Ross, so it's not like you're going to have early pressure. But, um, yeah, and I see he's going to this hunt pack next. I think he's going to go from here up to this town center and try for an early age two town center, which is pretty standard. On more enclosed maps, I kind of like the three town center Ra as opposed to two town center, but this is too open. You, you won't be able to do a three town center. Okay, ascending one Svili up here, and now two. Kimo does not have, other than this hunt, does not have a second hunt scouted. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. So it's actually, it's got one pack here, and then the other pack down here, actually pretty far forward. I'm almost, or maybe is slightly closer to Joe. So he'll go down to that hunt, I would think. No. Switching to berries. Foregoing going to the forward hunt. Hmm. Look at this gold mine right here, though. It's <laughs> You like build a little wall here and have a protected gold mine, albeit chariots from the back. So really not that great at all. Gold mines pretty fair. Um, gold slate gold mines are generally pretty aggressive, and that's what we see here. Though, man, yeah, this town center would be huge for Joe to get. Very big. Okay, Joe's getting two early monuments, which tells me he's going to go a Sekhmet, and I think that's the right play here. I I like the the Bass Sekhmet. In raw games, it is another eggy mirror. I know some don't like it. I like it. I like raw v raw. Now you, you can dis raw v raw matchups all you want, but the one cool thing about raw is that every single minor god is open, unlike most other gods where you really are kind of you, know, put, you really only have one or two choices um and the rest of the minor gods just aren't viable whereas Ra, you can go every god so you actually see a lot of variety in Ra mirrors or you can typically Ra's will generally just go ta um, hathor because that's the safest but if we see a bast into sekhmet here i think that can work one town center, Bass Sekhmet. We'll see though. I'm thinking that we will we will see Bass Sekhmet. No, we're seeing Ta. Hmm. Isn't a lot of hunt. So, hmm. But two two monuments. I mean, the two the second monument very early it tells me that he'd be I don't know but if you don't go Eclipse your set your your sphinx, scarabs not scarabs yeah your scarabs aren't that great well that's what I mean though you, you, they, they aren't used I mean 
Ravi Ra, every god is viable. You generally see a little more Ta, but I think Bast is kind of actually underappreciated. And are we seeing, we're seeing actually Bast from Chemo here. Okay, I didn't notice that. So he's up, Bast. Let's try to get his rain in right away and his plow. Does he have husbandry? He does. He actually never got hunting dogs. You know what? He started researching hunting dogs right away because I saw that on the uh, tech tech ticker. But he canceled it because he never actually got So that's why he went to the berries is because he didn't actually get hunting dogs. Joe has a lot more goats too. Yeah, quite a few more. And Joe is going for that forward town center that's very big. So I think we're going to see Schemo do the uh, one town center bast into scarabs. I like that. I, I think it's a very good and solid. Like, it should be able to kill this. Oh, he actually should have turned and fought the uh, Wadget there. Because once the pharaoh, the Sphinx gets going, the pharaoh can't actually kill it. So he should have actually attacked the uh, Wadget there. The thing you need to do if you're going to face the Sekhmet is try not to lose much on your forward. Because there's really no way you can hold this um, town center. Yeah, it's going to be tough though because all of Joel's close gold mines are on this side. We're definitely going to see segment, yeah. So one town center, bass segment at eight minutes. It's pretty decent timing. So really what you can do is you make one additional scarab and then just come forward right away. And as long as you're pretty quick with your eclipse, you can get on that town center and kill it. You know, if I'm actually Joe, I almost save rain just to block the um, Eclipse. Joe looks like he's trying to age up without using rain. So he does have more hunt here. So I'm thinking he might try to do that and, and in anticipation of the Scarab Rush. Use an early uh, transition to farms an early heroic. You know, we always see Hathor, so completely opposite gods here. <laughs> Very going for that gold vine. Does have this one scouted, I think. Chemo does. Yeah, he does. Joe doesn't really have anything. It's the curse of Ra. It's out with going non bass. You don't really get early scouting. Oh, yeah, so here comes that second scarab will be coming soon. Uh, we're going to need to get the rain in pretty quickly here. Because the goal is you don't want to waste time. So basically once the scarabs, you just send them and then come down here. And about the time they get here is when you use Eclipse. And so yeah, Chemo has full line of sight of this. And here comes the rain. So that's going to delay the scarab push. We are up 850. Which gold mine? This one? What are you talking about? Ooh, see, this is really risky. Uh, where are the scarabs? Oh, they're going the wrong way! This is not... He comes here and he uses Eclipse. Right here? He kills both of this. This is like... Uh, okay, it was just, just juking me out. Yeah, he needs to come over here. This is going to be really tough for Chemo to hold, or not Chemo, for Joe to hold. I don't know how he has... Yeah, this is not a good gold mine to go to. Alright, so Joe knows this is coming, but I just don't think there's anything that he can do here other than fall back. So now we're going to see, yeah, the immediate eclipse. Oh, don't want to lose your Pharaoh, though. He will. Okay, so get in on the... Oh, a third, third one. Yeah, get two on the Mignol, one on the Town Center. But we do have the three Petsucho. See, that rain actually 
did hurt quite a bit. It delayed the attack by about 50 seconds. And yeah, he's going to get pushed off. Should not have built the Migdal there. Definitely should not have. And now he's, his only gold mine is way up there. I... Scarabs are, the Scarab push is so strong. We can see how much health they have. Like he might even be able to get in on the base town center. This could be a very quick game four. <laughs> oh, we got eight seconds left. Could shift both of these Scarabs away, actually. Well, no, it's not going to go down. Oh, it might. He stopped attacking this one too soon. Why did he do that? Why? Joe using Locust. Okay, on the farms. Very expensive farms, but he, he should not have lost this town center. He could have finished up that Scarab and not lost his town center. That was a big mistake. So Joe at zero town centers. The question is, he's got eight gold, zero gold left on his gold mine. Made three Petsuchos, which are incredibly expensive. Has no economy. 400 gold in the bank. Does have shifting sands. <sighs> A lot of priests here. I... I like the best segment. Mm, that just needs to be careful. Does he have skin of the rhino? He doesn't. Is he getting it? No. So Billy's coming forward. Gotta get the chariots. Actually, the priests are in a bit of a risky spot here. They're actually kind of way out of position at this moment. And I don't know what these... I think Kimo was trying to take that town center, maybe? A little bit better military management. And I think Kimo could have prevented this. This is... Uh, I just gotta be careful. Vestuchos are very strong. And again, the, the... Gotta get this last few priests dead. Because Petsuchos do a ton of work, but now we've got... Okay, well, we got one priest left. As soon as you kill that, we're going to have the Migdal come back up. Mm. <laughs> I think Kimo should have stayed one town center and gone for the gold block. Now we've got... This is... Ooh. Joe, like, on the edge... <laughs> Hello, Atreus. No spoilers. No spoilers. We don't know the results. Joe is so close. But Kimo had just a little bit of bad military management here. He, his priests were on one side for a while there, and they got they got isolated by all of the chariots. Yeah, no, no spoilers. So, yeah. and a, a bunch of the uh, priests got killed. And then when the actual fight came out, there weren't enough priests. Now we still only have two priests. Oh yeah, they needed to heal that one up. But he's going to get this town center up. The plot thickens here. The one thing... Yeah, no spoilers, I'm sure. The one thing to know, what in the world is that? <laughs> Joe, Joe was at two town centers, so he has a better economy. He also went up Ta, which does give a better economy overall because of cheaper farms, so he's building his farms faster. Uh, Joe needs to fall back here. He's going too far forward. This really isn't a great chase for him to do here. He's to heal up his half kill that Petsuchos as well. So Joe just keeps his Joe just needs to keep his Petsuchos back and then do raids um, with his units. Because his Petsuchos can defend. 
I mean, you got Petsuchos, Migdal, Town Center. And how are we doing? First line, no hand axe though. Chemo, a little bit better. And grabbing a third Town Center. Bill counts, Bill counts. Joe, yeah, so you can see Joe's ahead there, but then falls behind. He loses his town center, slightly behind economy. Kill loss ratio slightly ahead. Oh, Pharaoh getting. Oh, should not have built those mercenaries there. It's a little bit of waste of economy. A little bit of a raid over here, though. Is the Petsucho subgrade expensive? It is. It's uh, 400 wood 20 favor. I think it gives plus 6 range. Let's, let's take a quick look. You don't see a obtained very often because generally it's just better just to add in one more Petsuchos. Uh, what are we looking at here? Um, yeah, 420 plus 6. I was spot on. Of course I played raw, I should. It's a little more expensive than what it's worth. There's a few villies up here. There's really no reason for them to be over there. I'll get one more. Skin of the Rhino? No, I did not think so. <laughs> the Petsuchos will be able to Swat these bills from across the uh, the tree line too. Yeah, there you go. Okay, upgraded chariots. Getting irrigation as well. <laughs> oh, why are they here? He has his gold mine back here and another one there. Really, no business for them to be here. That's just kind of losing bills for no reason. Because yeah, two petsuchos will one hit. Unupgraded villies. I think Skid of the Rhino actually makes them withstand two. So it's helping the gold. Oh wow, there's even more villies coming forward here. This is uh, strange. I guess he doesn't have enough chariots to kind of push off, but the Petsuchos, you need to be careful. Yeah, we got Bone Bow. This is a great technology. I'm glad to see Chemo getting this. It, Bumble plus four range for your chariots is is really really nice. Do you have a third town center for Joe? So Joe survives the scarab onslaught despite losing both town centers. Um, Kimo could have done a little bit more, but yeah, these see these chariots. This this wood line is really bad for Kimo. <laughs> really bad. Who's who's putting that nonsense in the chat? Ooh, gotta watch out though. Do we have any Pierce Armor upgrades? Uh, hold on here. We, we, we've got, I think, some... Next time that shows up in the chat, it's getting... We're, we're throwing some people out here. Oh, you, what's up, Greg? We are at the uh, what could be the very last game, or maybe not. Uh, we'll find out. Kimo is a little bit ahead economically now, but again, <laughs> just suiciding Billy's over here. And going to lose his Pharaoh again, which is very, very important. He got, the Pharaoh got picked off down here, and then he immediately comes back and gets picked off again. And now Kimo realizing maybe he should not be at this gold mine. Eco upgrades, first line of everything except for he does have irrigation. Oh. Joe missing out on upgrades again, as he has been really for most of this series. Joe has good good resources in the bank, though. He's actually been trading decently here, especially with um, getting the uh, ooh, camels. I don't think Joe has line of sight at anything over here yet. So he's splitting up to try to find where things are. He sees this mining camp. Oh, he's going to show up just in time there. And we'll stop that Migdol. Maybe kill some villies here. Depends if they're able to sneak through the gate. They're actually just getting killed. Oh, gotta watch out, though, not to suicide units over here to the Bone Bow Chariots. Okay. Man, if, if oh, I'm going to work this... It's going to be big to see if he checks that mining camp there. Because he doesn't need to defend down here. Oh, he's going to go up. What kind of relics do we got? Tail of Cerberus, specials. Okay, we got we had a few chariots come over. And what's the other one? 
Even a nebula I don't care. Do we have any pierce? We do have a pierce armor. Oh, he could get on this. Fight, fight this, Joe. Come on. No, no, fight. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's a, this is another nice trade for uh, for Joe here. Um, so far, trading fairly well. Military now needs to fall back now that all the chariots are there. And if he could have got on that gold mine. See, Kimo is teching up. Joe is aging up though. While Kimo is getting all of the techs, Joe is aging up. We'll see which trade is better. Now he's, he he is getting more. Um, Eco upgrades too. Looks like he's gonna try to find a place to use tornado. How close is he up? 85%. Again, this is a really nice fight for Joe again here. Oh, I, I probably would have stayed here as uh, Joe and fought that. Kind of losing his caravan or his camels in the back for no real reason. But he needs to get value out of his tornado immediately. Kimo is also aging up. I don't know about that. So we got a tornado used here. Um, get some chariots. We'll get the Migdal down. Um, and toss a siege tower in the air. But loses a Petsuchos. I think... I don't know. See... He could have used it to get on a town center, though he was not pushing on a town center. Instead, we'll try to push through here. We got, we do have the citadel there. Building forward with catap, with okay, Migdal and getting a catapult out. Does Kimo's only other okay, Kim only other military production building currently is way over here. Kimo's still got better eco. Let's check build count should be about the same. Kimo with the trade route first. Yeah, pretty similar in eco. Kimo a little bit better. Joe has been trading quite a bit better as far as military. Courtesy of the Petsuchos, I'd say, primarily. Got a few lost camels here. So now where does the... where does... oh, we already got upgraded camels. Where does Chemo's tornado come in? This is an important push right here for Joe. He needs to keep this pressure up. Probably get a few towers built here because Chemo does not have a trade route yet. So this push needs to count because he's behind economy. Uh, actually quite a bit behind in tech still. Got decent armor. Armor. He actually got better army techs right now. And without a son of Osiris, these Petsuchos will still actually do quite a bit of damage. And ooh, Kimo, a little bit. Uh, getting careless here. Has had these villies idle for a little bit, and now they're just dying. Saw the upgraded fortified town centers. Okay, now he's noticed. There is actually a little gap right there. Got the catapult. Just one. We would like to see upgrade. Number two gets point number one in your heart. <laughs> Maybe I lost a purpose to make Boyt feel better, because I could tell he was take he took those two first losses pretty hard. Maybe. Okay, no. Oh, gotta get on the ch gotta get on the Yeah, there we go, get on the Pharaoh again. It dies again. And now the Avenger can play. We might have to have a almost a panic tornado used here. Boy, this Avenger tanks so much damage. Yeah, this is the push. This push needs to work for Joe. Upgraded chariots. Trying to get upgraded spearmen, but they do take a that getting spearmen to the point that they become good it takes a ton of food. He does have the greatest of fifty, but until they get improved much they get absolutely shredded by chariots and we see these camels are mowing down these chariots here so this is uh, this is 
is a strong. I. Kimo's. Uh, he's. This push. It's just these two catapults, though, is the only siege. The only siege. He's got a trade route. Does have the upgrade for the trade. Yeah, with the uh, Citadel, though, 5,000 hit points. Doesn't need to react yet. Kimo does. Uh, yeah, okay, here's the towers. We'll have a hard time keeping these up, though, because we do have the two catapults in defense. Could actually get on them. Now, get the chariots on the catapults. There you go. For some reason, the catapults. Ooh. Uh, you gotta get on that. Okay, the catapults. Oh! Oh! No! Oh, they, they, come on! Finish it off! Okay, alright. Finish it off. We'll still get that tower up. Do we have crenellations? No crenellations. Need crenellations to get at the uh, mercenaries. Uh, we're gonna have to have. Chemo's probably gonna have to tornado this. Well, so far it's already been fun, and we're only 23 minutes. And yeah, Chemo needs to tornado this. It has to. He can hold out a little bit, but it, the tornado has to come soon. He's. Oh, come on. You, you gotta use it. You got to. You can't lose the. Uh, we got the Pharaoh empowering on the backside, though. That he, he empowers so fast. Need to get a chariot on the Pharaoh. Yeah, he's. There comes the chariots, too. Oh, he's not gonna get at the Pharaoh. Pharaoh coming, spawning, and might actually save this without needing. Because he is not on the... Yeah, you need to send a camel in, and now he's lost two, three catapults. Okay. Man, Kimo holding on to that tornado. I would have used it. There, but Kimo held off on the trigger. And that's kind of the push there. Because there's no way he's going to be able to keep up. As long as this Pharaoh's up, this t town center with unupgraded catapults will not go down. Joe has a little bit of a trade route. Again, it's, an, it's a bad trade route. I don't know why he keeps making these awful trade routes. Like, why is the market not here and trading all the way across the map? I, I don't understand this. Doesn't even have the upgrade yet for the camel caravans. But yeah, that's the push, and... Ooh, it's gonna be tough for Joe to win here, I would say, at this point. Uh, military... Still not very good military upgrades, though. No... Wow, Joe's got really good, actually, has really good armory upgrades. And Kimo has got, he had his auto queue on for his um, mercenaries, and they're kind of wasted, actually. And really, Joe should just fall back, wait for all these mercenaries just to die from their timeout. But, oh, needs to power his market, too. Kimo does. Okay. Medium spearmen, carpenters. This trade route is just awful. What's he getting? 47 gold compared to 100. Some of these are messed up because they got canceled halfway through. Yeah, we got a little bit of a raid on here. Yeah, 108. 108 to 47 is the trade route difference. Again, that's so big. And this is one of, another one of those mistakes that's just... It has no reason. It's not like it's a forced mistake where, you know, it's because of pressure. He just has his market in... It's just stupid. Like, here to here. Uh, whatever. Anyway. Oh, man. Let's take a look. Overall, resources are very, very similar. I'm actually surprised that Joe is up. Economy. 
He only has a nice trade route. <laughs> yeah, this game... Joe does have the map control. So he's uh, been on the Fortnite grind. Not really. A little bit here and there. Alright, getting some towers in. Do we have crenellation? So now he's getting it. As, we, as I speak, he's getting crenellations. Really, this attack here... Well, Kimo has... Where's Kimo's army? Where is it? So he's at full pop. I guess he just has so much trade currently that he really doesn't have much of an army. Are we still having a lot of caravans going to this market? No, 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 no. They're, they're coming back. Some of them are coming back without a load. <laughs> yeah, neat. Before the before this push can ever work, he needs to upgrade his catapults. Otherwise, against the 5,500 hit point citadel, it'll never quite work. But Joe has the map control. You get your forward towers. He's also transitioning to spearmen. Does not have the greatest of 50 or other spear tech. Kimo is getting some more special techs. He's getting the catapult tech from Sekhmet and also another forest tech, but needs to get his armory upgrades. Oh man, that traitor out. So you make spearmen. Spearmen are actually very good because they get a pretty substantial attack bonus versus catapults, which are going way forward and suiciding. Yeah, you just get a couple of these spearmen on the uh, catapults. There you go. They finish them off quite quickly. But no upgraded catapults yet. I'd um, I would like... So this is like a bad version of AoE 2. Depends who you ask. But AoE 2 is the better game. But AOM is still very good. <laughs> Watch your finger. <laughs> Yeah, what Joe needs to do, he needs to, because he has the aggression over here, you kind of, it is a very pretty game for as old as it is, it, it, it has aged very well. When you're on the aggression, you want to attack on multiple fronts, because otherwise having the map control really doesn't do much when you're still just a one front fight. And again, we've got these these unupgraded catapults will just never kill the citadel. Now where they're upgraded, as I just got them upgraded. But yeah, just like just a few units over here, and, and he's got a few, can do so much work. Like if he just puts a few towers over here, um, he can do a lot of damage and then get in on the trade route, and then you have Chemo having to having to defend on two sides and then what Joe can do is kind of rotate back and forth and because he has the aggression he's the one that gets to kind of you know when it gets to that seesaw effect he can determine when the attack goes over here and when it goes over here and then Kimo has to respond um, but okay getting better techs Joe's almost got all of the armory techs Okay, 103 channels is still the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kimo should get a priest to empower his citadel there. Yeah, the AoE 2 maps are very static, but there are so many more. So it kind of... I wish we actually used more maps in AOM, but um, that's all right. Okay, nice towers here. How upgraded are they? Just the first upgrade. Again, we still got this awful trade route. Okay, getting on that other one. As long as he, there's only one more. Oh, there's another siege workshop back there. Yeah, the bog maps. Those are pretty cool. Ooh. Why did he go back with his chariots? It's going to let his catapults go down. Oh, that's not good. Okay. Not through here. 
Water firing up. Chemo has aged up. Joe is getting sun-dried mud brick. <laughs> mud brick. Okay, he does have the favor, just does not have the gold. The reason he doesn't have the gold is because his trade route is absolutely awful. You feel exhausted watching this. Yeah, Egyptian v. Egyptian can be... Oh, he does have... Shifting... Oh, Kibo still has Tornado. So we have the Shifting Sands potential to get on that. We have the Tornado the other hand. But Joe, does Joe have any... Sie he does have a few Siege. Boy, he if he got line of sight of this right now, he could shift just this and the, and the Titan Gate would go down. I don't know why he's not... Rushing, yeah, it depends on the matchups. Rushing can be pretty decent. Depends on the matchup, depends on the god. Oh, he lost his opportunity, though, to shift and kill it, I feel like. Uh, man, are we going to get to the thing again where... Okay, Joe is researching Secret of the Titans, but how is he going to research it and not have it killed by the Tornado? Okay, killing the Migdol. See, there's actually so little here. As soon as the Migdol goes down, Joe could get on this trade route right now. But the big thing to worry about is... is the Titan Gate. And what? how in the world will Joe get his without having it killed by the uh, tornado. Yeah, this is where you, you push. This is where Joe pushes. He spent too much time pushing on the uh, Citadel there. Mm. Uh, it's 50% up. It's too late to, you, to shift on it. Okay, the Titan Gate has been researched by Joe. Kimo has Kimo has tornado. It's gonna be risky. Like he he ha Joe is gonna need to wall off the corner. I feel like in order to get a Titan Gate. Looks like he is going for a shift. This is something that probably should have happened about three minutes ago. Yeah, he definitely is going to go for a shift on the Titan Gate. He's got to hurry, though. It's at 87, 88%. There's no way. I don't see how he kills it. He's got six catapults. Oh, he's not going to shift in time. Oh, 98. Oh, 98. No. <laughs> it was at 99. No, why did he use a tornado in defense? Oh, no reason to use Tornado defensively there. That The Titan Gate, would. there's no way it would have gone down. Not even close to that. And now Joe gets his Titan up. He could have just... Ah, that was a huge waste of the Tornado. The, the Titan Gate would not have gone down. Not even close. So that use of the Tornado allows Joe to get his Titan up. That keeps Joe in the game. That keeps Joe in. It might look like he, the Titan can get down here, but we know how easy it is to uh, path block Titans. Um, the Titan won't make it in time unless Joe completely screws up the uh, path block. Oh, we're getting another wonder. <laughs> oh, the wonder. But Joe has rocks. And Joe has map control, kind of. Well, you know, he's kind of lost it a little bit. Um, and the map is smaller. Okay, here comes the Titan. Joe needs the path block, though. I mean, you can't just ignore it and assume it won't ever get down there. Uh, he's going to need to bring his his uh, trade route up and block with the uh, catapults. Or not the... block with the caravans. Like, there's... He hasn't pass blocked at all. We've got the two billies coming in too. Alright, uh, catapults path blocking. Uh, 
Okay, you need to get the caravans to the path block. 55% up. Oh. Oh. He's... These vills actually forward are very big. <laughs> Why? There's no path blocking. Oh, the only thing. Oh, jeez. He's going to have to path block for probably 30 seconds here. Oh, just keep fighting. No, why, why did he run? He actually lost space there. Just keep killing these units. 80% up. Do we have more caravans? We need to send more caravans up. Oh, 82%. Uh-oh. 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 Are these caravans going to come up? <laughs> They're done. Oh, I don't know. I just fight. Kill the care of What is he doing? 90% up. Just keep killing the kill the caravans. Why? The, if this Titan gate gonna go up. Oh my goodness. 95, 96, 97%. It's gonna go up. I can't believe this. <laughs> oh wow that that was terrible went awesome all at the same time <laughs> all he had to do was just keep attacking all he had to do and what's going on in the rest of the map so what happens now well, what happens now is generally the Titans, when they start fighting each other, will, yeah, you'll just see Titan on Titan violence. Now, this one has already lost 1,500 hit points, so this one will probably live with about 1,500. But on the back end, Kimo has gotten quite a lot of map control on this bottom side, and Kimo does have now this wonder. Really, a uh, Joe. <laughs> Decisions. Yeah, you just kill the Titan. Oh, 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 you got, got fight, man. Oh, wow. Um, Titans get a huge attack bonus. So we can see Joe actually lost about a 1, thousand, twelve hundred hit points. Now we got the, oh, what? In Hello? Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Okay, now Joe's going to be behind on the Titan v. Titan violence. I can't. So now Kimos will end up winning with about 500 hit points. Should not have. Joe absolutely screwed his Titan control there. Heavyweight boxing. <laughs> they just keep slugging away at each other. And they'll eventually go down. Alright, so 146 hit points left. So, man, Joe should have won that Titan v. Titan with about 1500. In the end, it comes about even. Titan will try to get on the town center. 59 hit points. Ooh. Okay, the catapults actually do quite a bit of damage to the Titans, but I don't think Joe has much. He only has. He, he does not have an army right now. He might lose his town center here. He has nothing. He has nothing to defend this, and going to lose his town center. No, the only way to heal a titan is that Lanians get a special tech that regenerates like two or three health a minute, or not a minute, a second. So it's not much, but oof, I don't know how Joe's gonna get this back. And Kimo's got a wonder, which is kind of. No, the Norse tech does not heal. No, Norse cannot heal. Once you fall back behind, though, I, I don't know how Joe's going to get his town center up. Yeah, you have to have. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the, 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 the regeneration sounds great, but if you're healing it, then it's taking 20 pop. 
Oh, he's going to get this town center up. And that's GG. It is going to be a 4-0. Oh. oh. Disappointing. A 4-0 oh sweep in the finals of the tournament. And Kimo is our champion of the Bill Gregg Open. 1v1 2020 tournament. We've got Kimo with the champion. Joe just... Oh, hmm. I mean, the one bad thing that Kimo did here was, um, <laughs> why did you just kill the Titan Gate? In the end, it didn't matter. Kimo won. Kimo wins 4 to 0, man. Shoot. Kimo got lucky for it. No, Kimo did not get lucky four times. Uh, you'd like to say it, but no. No, Greek can't heal the Titan either. The only, please listen to me, the only way to heal the Titan is with the Atlantean um, technology. Let's take a look at it. Uh, it's this one right here. Regenerates two hit points a second. So you're talking 120 hit points a minute. No, the Apollo God Power does not heal the Titan. For some reason, the Titan is not. Because you cannot heal it, but it can regenerate. And that's two different types of healing. The Temple does healing. The Technology does regeneration. And that's different. But man, Kimo wins four to zero. And again, I mean, Joe tried to push through here, couldn't quite do it. And I, I, again, I feel like his awful trade route that he had here cost him this game too. Um, because why in the world is he getting, what was he getting, like 30? He was getting like 30 trade a trip or 30, maybe 40. Might have been 40, 45 to over 100 for chemo. Um, now chemo is only at 76 because he did shorten it when Jet Joe was pushing here. But again, this trade route from there to here. No, the temple technology does, is, doesn't work. It's healing. Um, it's not regeneration. So the Apollo Temple technology, this is what it does. It's 20, 20 healing a second. How do we get on it? I think there's a way to bug it out where you can heal it twice as fast, maybe. I'm not sure. But um, do I know what Chemo's hotkey setup is? I don't know. Um, yeah, nobody gets it. It's It's okay. I mean, 20 hit points a second is actually pretty fast. It's actually pretty solid. Straight killer is followed. Um, no, I don't know what Kimo's hotkey setup is. Um, one, two, one, two, yeah. Honestly, hotkeys really aren't super important in Age I mean, they're important to a certain extent. But it's not like you need a magic set of hotkeys to be decent. You don't even necessarily... Age of Mythology is a pretty forgiving RTS. You don't really even need to be super fast to be competitive. Um, obviously it helps. But I've always kind of called AOT kind of more of a casual RTS. It, it's You don't have a ton of units. Um, to, to manage you have auto queued it kind of does most of it already for you anyway um, and really you can kind of just do a few things with each god and have decent chances of winning um, so yeah you, you, I mean hotkeys they're helpful obviously but uh, you don't really need a certain you don't really need any sort of special set to be good at it I, I just do I mean I'm not even really that great anymore I guess I just use QWER um, for hotkeys, just, you know, straight across the board for everything. QWER, I mean, there's a little bit, of, I have a few differences, and then there's some I just don't use at all because I'm lazy and old Avis die hard. But, um, yeah, four to zero. So let us 
for the record, finish up our series here. We had Ra v. Ra, and Kimo wins the tournament 4-0. to zero. That's a little bit of a disappointing finals, but yeah, it is what it is, you know? I mean, you cannot dictate how the players play. So, Joe v. Kimo, and Joe does not win a single game so what are our I guess we can look at now our placements um, and take a look at our order of players um, yeah so th that's the one thing that you do look at you're right Cameron it's um we had a lot of it's hard to complain I mean we had we had so many good matches and good series. Um, in fact, let's uh, real quick, we're going to look at the um, final brackets here now that we have them all finished up. So this is the brackets of the double elimination. Remember that it started out as a 60-player tournament, single elimination, and then the top eight were double elim. Um, and so this is our double elimination where Joe actually beat Kimo 3-0 in the very first round of the double elim. But I, I think you can say that Kimo really, I mean, Kimo played off God and really didn't play very well or didn't try, I don't think, very hard. Um, so he he lost 3-0, to zero, got down here, fell behind 2-0 to zero to Sheltie, then switched to Ra and won the next three games fairly easily. I think there, I think game three, Sheltie should have won, as I recall. And then Kimo looked really good against Player. Kimo looked really good against Matrius. Kimo barely slid by Scotty. I feel like if Scotty played just a little bit better in that last game, it would have been Scotty in the finals. Um, Joe looked really good. He close series against Matrius, really good against Scotty, and then just a, a few key mistakes in each game um, that resulted in that four to zero um, in the finals. But yeah, we had a, we had a lot of nice series, um, a lot of nice games. Um, the best for me, the best series in the tournament was Scotty versus Chemo. Um, right here. Matrius versus Joe is also really good. Um, but yeah, we, we had a lot of a lot of good series, a lot of good games. I'm going to have to calculate how many games we actually had played in the tournament. It was quite a bit. Um, a lot of games. So, while maybe the finals didn't quite live up to the hype that they could have been, it's still, still pretty good. St still good. I, it was still a good, interesting last set of games. So yeah, so here's our... Um, here is our finals standings here. Remember the top eight all won money. Um, our thousand dollar tournament courtesy of our mysterious donator. So Kimo first, Joe second, Scotty third, Matrius fourth, Hell's Ravage and Player were both the fifth spot, and then Brickhead and Shelty were seventh, not winning a single match in the um in the uh, double elimination, player, this is the for me. This is the surprise of the tournament. Right here is player getting a fifth slash sixth. I did not expect that. I thought player would finish top three. Um, so that was a surprise. I thought it would be player instead of K Scotty up here. Chemo winning or chemo being second doesn't surprise me. Um, even though he was seated six, Kimo plays a ton. He, I mean, in this tournament, he was the best player. Um, I don't think you can argue with that. Um, and Kimo had a really low-key logos mentioning Kimo changed his play style against Matrius. Um, he did have a very aggressive raw against Matrius, especially in that painted desert. Um, and that was uh, that was really good. Um, but yeah, we. Four to zero. So yeah, let's look at, um, let's see, our uh, cash prizes here. We'll go over that real quick. So I've kind of been avoiding the Discord and the Titan some um, to know. Well, I, I, two Eggy players in the final, any surprise? I don't, I don't think so because the best players are Egyptian. I really don't think Egyptian are the best gods, hands down. Um, 
I mean, Scotty, outside of just miss playing poorly, really badly, like in that Ghost Lake game, Scotty versus Chemo, there is no reason Chemo won that game other than Scotty just suicided units all game long and didn't make an eco. That was an Aranos, like as far as Ghost Lake, Aranos v. Ra, that was about as good of an Aranos map as you could get. And Scott, it should have been Scotty versus Joe. Um, so it is like not not really a surprise because Chemo's the best player currently. And Joe is probably the second best, um, but but yeah, I mean, uh, Kimo really when he yeah, Skatey should have been there, but he choked in that last game, which I mean, I guess should have, would have, could have, but you know, whatever, it is what it is. And otherwise, Matrius also played not so well against Kimo. Matrius, to me, that was the most disappointment of the tournament was Matrius versus Chemo. Uh, Matrius really did not play that series well at all. Um, his god power usage overall throughout that series was very poor, um, and his attacks were very poor as well. Um, so, yeah, of course, people are going to say to Eggies, so obviously Eggies are the best, but... Uh, I, I I don't think it's really because of that. Um, I think there are many other factors that played into that. Um, but anyway, let's. Uh, oh, Scotty's got a message for me. I think is he wanting his money? Yeah, he is wanting his money. <laughs> All righty. Okay, so our prize. Prizes here is first 350, second 250, third 125, fourth 75, fifth sixth gets 60, seventh eighth gets 45. I think it totals up to like 1,010 um, total. So that was that's pretty. Good. That was awesome. It was tournament went a lot better, like easier to run than I thought it would be. Um, it extended a little bit longer than I wanted. Scotty is no match for chemo. How can you say that when Scotty should have beaten him? Like, there was, Scotty should have won. So you can't say he's no match when Scotty should have been the one in the finals. Uh, but what I think we might do here, we might play a couple games just so that my stream isn't 40 minutes and everybody knows later on on the YouTube that it's one and done game. So maybe we'll play a couple games. I haven't been playing much lately. Uh, oh, there's a 3v3, but it's full. Oh, there's a guy. Yeah, yeah, kick out the guy who's 1,500 and let me play. I like it. All right, do we have a couple fast proxies? So, uh, I wonder if it's me. No way. What do you mean, no way? Scotty should have won that game five. Scotty should have been in. Should have. But again, though, what do you say? Should have, could have, would have. If you don't win, you lose. Yeah, and again, on meta, if Scotty goes Zeus there, he wins. I don't know why he went Gaia there. It was the dumbest decision I think I've seen. I don't know why he wouldn't have gone Zeus. So yeah, that's I forgot about that. Yeah, Kyo should have won that in four games. He should have won it in five. He didn't either because of his moronic Gaia pick. Not that Gaia is terrible, but why wouldn't you go Zeus there? Zeus is so much better. I think I have fast proxy because I probably will need to maybe reset my router so I don't think I have the ports open for Vubli right now. Let's see. Oh, failure. <laughs> okay, Vubli, what do we got here? Yeah, I don't know why he went Gaia. Yeah, I had this might lag. 
because I have fast proxy. Oh, well, let's get my APM counter up here. Where is my APM counter? Desktop, APM counter. Where is it? Oh, come on, this is stupid. <laughs> All right, well, would have liked to have more games than that, but that's okay. Desktop APM, there I was, I was looking under the wrong thing. All right, desktop APM, let's go to playing normal. Let's delete this. Oh, the vanilla final? Oh, come on. I just deleted my overlay. <laughs> and the one bad thing is that there's no undo for when you delete an overlay. So like now my APM, dang it, that's so stupid. Now they're waiting for me in this game, whatever. We'll go random. As soon as I get the setup, I'll get my I'll get my uh, webcam back on here. I mean, you can save profile. Yeah, but I deleted my overlay. You can't see the game screen. Are you sure? It shows that you can. Player disconnected. Okay, cool. Uh, now I can fix it. Are you sure you couldn't? Dang it, I want to copy me and then paste me. There we are. All right. Okay. Let's get my scoreboard down to the bottom. Order, move to bottom. Okay. This seems like it's too big, though. People want to watch the game, not me. Sexy Chameleon is in the game. Okay, only one fast proxy. That's not the end of the world. Kino's Titan Age is the best. What won him the game is, well, there's a few things that won. But one thing I did notice in that series is that Kimo was really good on getting technologies. But the only game that Joe kind of caught up in technologies or cut, was that last game because Joe had all of his armory upgrades but was still behind economically. But on every other game, Kimo has been doing really well with his upgrades. There's a big delay. Is there a big delay? Usually it's like 10 or 15 seconds. Oh, we're in Donald John Trump's game here. Okay, now it might not work, but. There we go. Oh yeah, I mean in that game, I mean Joe's, Joe's um, Joe's army composition on the Painted Desert game though was just so bad. That was his problem there. I mean slingers and chariots, everything there gets killed by. Terma, which is what Chemo amassed anyway. Joe just played right into Chemo there in that game. Alright, so we'll play a couple games and then we'll have a few things to wrap up. Oh, yeah, I guess I can do it tomorrow. As far as getting people getting ready, getting their prize money sent over. Um, so, alrighty. Can you guys see okay? Well, very quick. Man, if I would have known. Um, not really. Messing you up. Uh, only if you're, like, good. Because then little things can get a hitch in your game. But if you're just average, you can kind of go back and forth and really have no issue. Mm -hmm. I'm a Ronos. Look at these town centers. <laughs> Are Egyptian too overpowered? I don't think so. I think they're in a decent spot now. Q 
argument in chat. But I don't think so. I think they could be tweaked a little bit. But it's not to the point where they are way too strong and there's no way to beat them. They're still good. Yeah, I I do agree. I think Mercs are still too strong. I mean, personally, I, I, I would have a long time ago had um, nerfed them into the ground, but I am just one man. 2v2v2 next. See, that's the one bad thing about the AOM community is there's not a lot of stuff like that that goes on very often. It's the one thing I kind of miss, like Age of Empires 2 on Vubli. I used to play a decent amount of land nomad free-for-alls. Um, oh, I got Idle Town Center time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the old land now at free for all sorts. You can only play him so much though, because after a while it's kind of repetitive. The land nomad free for alls. You wanted to join this room while you were too slow. But the nice thing about being a Ranos is that you have almost nothing. I had a lot of idle town center. <sighs> yeah, I do agree. That's something I wish we would have done a little more of at the beginning. Now, I don't know why people think that the Egyptian building should cost gold, because they already take way longer to build, and the entire and Egyptian villagers gather slower and build slower so in the end that part is actually pretty well balanced but I see, see a decent amount of people come up with that but I, I don't agree with that at all that's what makes them different I mean if you would this is another thing that I kind of learned throughout the... Oh, I need a temple. Throughout the patching process. Because early on we kind of achieved it by... Early on we kind of achieved it by, like, negating strengths and specific weaknesses. Which, in some way, you kind of have to do that. But when... Overall, I feel like when balance is achieved by removing unique traits, whether it be strengths or weaknesses, you're not really balancing the game, you're just making it the same. So, like, that's why I don't like the new units that are in the Extended Edition, because each of the new units directly re directly solves or attempts to solve a unique weakness for each god and it shouldn't be like that you shouldn't be achieving balance by removing weaknesses like that i just don't like that Boy, my eco is awful At my eco. <laughs> Having idle town center time for so long was really quite problematic. Yeah, the old coronavirus. It's it's an interesting phenomenon. It's going to be strange to see how what all happens with that. It's not too bad here just because Americans are dumb and I don't think realize it's a problem. We're kind of behind intel uh, all sorts of things because of that. Yeah, I need to. 
Yuji. I need to make a house for these guys. Yuji. Yeah, those new maps aren't. Um, I really only did work on them for single player or one v one. I mean. But I would like to one secret kind of reason that I I wanted to see all those maps in the tournament was because I would like to see a couple of them in the um, map in the map pool. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Is the economic pandemic is that. How it affects the economy is, I find that very fascinating. It's very, I mean, it's not cool in a way. I mean, it kind of is when you think of it purely as just a more of a scientific kind of a thing. But yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's an interesting, just how it affects the world is very, very strange. I'm in Illinois too. I guess I live far enough away from anywhere real that nobody really cares yet. But like nobody around here cares at all about the thing. There's like almost no, no worry. I'm being really defensive here. I'm looking for. Oh, well, this is not good. I just lost two terma for nothing. No, he's losing. It's Prometheans for nothing. I should have shockwaved the, uh, Termite here, the uh, Mermillos there. Mm, boy, we're not finding much for uh, for goats out there on the ice. Oh, he's uh, he's there. Interesting. Where did his army go? Oh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> Whatever relic you're holding, I will not take. Stop losing units. Man. Okay. Actually, no. I need to get this town center. 
Yuji, Yuji. Burek. Shkopos. A poor of Ras. Yuji. 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 What? It's like two units. Just kill them. Just rebuild your ox cart. I can't hit that stupid thing. This might be a bit of a problem here. He actually suicided a ton of units there. Oh, <laughs> put up a couple towers, I think. <laughs> What? Okay, that, I'm glad I didn't lose that one. Oh, he's up. Papito is already up. Oh, and the shockwave too. Oof. Why is that town center idle? I'm a little bit worried about this game here. Donald Trump pauses. Oh, I probably need a... Two town centers. I can get a third tower there, I'd feel pretty good. Actually, I think that's a little bit overkill. This monitor went to sleep. 
Yeah, I don't need to. Build another one. In fact, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet. He didn't die. I can actually push this because. Okay, this is that's worth it. Oh, what is going on anyway? Nothing good anywhere, I feel like. Oh, that's not good. Oh man, that, that, that did not turn out very well for me. Things are not looking at too red hot right now. I think he might have more units on that, though. Dang it. Where are his gold fills? Oh. Okay, now let's grab that town center if I can. Yeah, it sounds like Italy is spiraling out of control. You right, you right. I don't know if I'm going to get this town center up. Especially not with all my... 
Alright, I did get it up. Oh, I did not notice that. Dang it. Where's my... This is really sucking. I guess I do have another Valor, don't I? Which I forgot about. <laughs> the problem in this game is that yellow is badly outplaying red. Oh, why is losing his units like this? How long have those those freaks been idle? I have no business being like not dead in this game yet. What's going on on the other side of the map, anyway? Where did Purple's army go? Uji. 
Where did Purple's army go? Am I missing something? I do have vital bills. You're a good man. Oh, how would I get some Satyr, huh? Me keeping this town center down is gigantic. <laughs> so how we how do we win this? Yeah, well, Red putting in work because he has a little bit of an early reside. We might actually not win. I don't have anything. Because of this, we might. I don't know. Maybe we will. I don't know what happened. Did, did he get rocked by something that I didn't see where his like army disappeared? I caught it his town center die. I, I don't even know. This shows how much attention I pay to these games. In these games. <laughs> how little I know what's really, really going on. Well, let's just go down to uh, yellow, I guess. Yeah, losing my starting town centers really hurt me too. Yeah, I know. Red question with Reg, but this town center died before Reg even came up. I don't have any wood. Oh, 
Yeah, Papito did not, I don't think, played very well. <laughs> this chaos completely destroyed this attack here. Man! You guys thought it was over. I thought it was over. I don't know what Papito did there. <laughs> yeah, Papito. With the other killing both of my town centers, I really had no business being there. In this game. Big pro Hirano. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know. About that. Oh. But Vivo did a quick age 3, but like didn't do anything with it. Also, was what was kind of strange. I'm not sure how we won. <laughs> I don't know how we won that. Really had no business. I guess Gladiator did his reg sooner. A little bit sooner with a few more villies. But uh, I, I'm not sure what happened to Papito's army there at the end. But a win is a win. And shall we play one more game? Oh man, Papito is not a good... I thought he was better than that. Man. What did I miss? You guys saw a little bit of coronavirus being talked about. Dirty Arano's flair. I got random, man. Oh, you were everywhere. Everywhere in the world, it sounded like. Yeah, I bet the number of people that have it, it's like substantially and ridiculously higher than the actual counts. Guarantee. But we'll play one more game. It wasn't really that laggy, I guess, despite having fast proxies. Papito made me look very good. Well, not very good, I guess. <laughs> Papito made me look reasonable. 2v2. I'm not going to find anybody to play a 2v2v2, though. Like, it just doesn't happen. Like, I wouldn't be able to find anybody that would do that. I have started playing um, a little bit of Subnautica lately. I don't know if anybody is in the chat has played it or cares. Um, it's an interesting game. Uh, it'll be a 3v3. Dang it. I need to fix my fast proxy, which actually, I'd fix it by restarting my router. Yeah, I can see, I play it on the Xbox. The It does not do well with controller. The um, one frustrating thing, I have, I feel like they could have streamlined the like the menus and the crafting a little bit better. Like I really have a hard time remembering slash looking up like what I need to make my certain crap. And it takes a while to look it up. It might just be an Xbox thing. I don't know if maybe, the, I mean, I just having a mouse would be so much easier 
So I don't know if the overlay or whatever is a lot different on the um, the Xbox or the yeah, the Xbox, but I played it a few. I think I played it for three hours. I, I did it blind. I really don't know anything about the game other than it was about like a survival slash exploration game in the water. Um, I could see it getting a little bit repetitive. At this point, it's already starting to get just a little bit, albeit I haven't really probably gotten too much of the cool stuff. I said to do Norse. And because I'm kind of incompetent, it's probably taking me a little bit longer to get started or get going. Um, but some of it, I don't know. I understand the lack of like information you get going in because it's a survival game, but it also makes it a little bit frustrating in the beginning because there's really like figuring out what to do and what you should get right away it takes forever. Like it took me a while to realize, you know what, I should take the time to like get a bigger air tank and get um, the thing that lets you swim faster. And now I need to find one more thing to scan to build the whatever the the one thing that lets you the first, I guess, machine you can ride around in. Um, I forget the name of it. Um, what in the world is going on here? Play it with my son. He. he likes to watch a little bit so <laughs> today he built himself a uh, we were building a uh, a blanket fort in the, uh, the living room and the blanket fort became our um, our escape pod and then he set up a whole bunch of tools or not tools a whole bunch of toys on in a row and like turned them all upside down and that was the crash spaceship and then he was making things in our. He was crafting, crafting random items, uh, in the uh, toys, and was crafting them in our little um, blanket fort. And uh, it was kind of entertaining. I think he understands the game more than I do. Should I go in this other game room? Now that Donald is observing, how many fast proxy am I going to get here? Oh, none. Maybe just one. Or none. Okay. Yeah, it was kind of entertaining. I should have taken a picture of it. Um, I think my wife did. But... Oh, yeah, it, it's alright. I just... Uh, I just realized there's actually land in it. Because I just had that stupid... Why am I host? Let's go. I just reached the point. I assume it's probably the same about time period in every game where those people come to pick you up from the from the uh, from the planet. That doesn't work out well. So I was like, "Oh, there is land." Like, "Oh, I think I know how this is gonna go here." <laughs> this is kind of entertaining. All right, so we want Norse. Dust in the Wind wants me to play some Norse. We'll play one last game and then we'll be done. And then it'll probably be about four, five days, four days before I stream again, I think. If you're in the chat, Dust in the Wind, which um, Norse do you want me to do specifically, if you have a preference? We got Thor, Odin, and Loki. We need one more player to get in here. Thor, Odin, or Loki. If he's even here anymore. <laughs> Everybody leaves. This might not actually work out because I was fast proxy. I need to open my ports. Man, if I would have known yesterday that this was a four-game series, I would have just finished it all in one night. <laughs> I stopped at the third game. Are they
Dante coming in or what? I don't really want Thor. If this game doesn't work, I might just have to call it a night. Because what is it? 11 o'clock? 11.07. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> Want to tell me what can It'd be hard not to spoil. <laughs> A lot of break would help Joe. Yeah, that was kind of the hope. Like, maybe Joe will turn it around. Um, oh. Sure. You know, I might be Odin. Maybe I'll go Thor. I don't know where these other people went. GA Tech. All right, let's do a 2v2. Oh. Not a, I need four players for a 2v2. I will not wreck. I'm going Thor, sexy Canadian. OK, 2v2. Well, that'll hopefully make it go a little faster, too. I'll go Thor. We'll see how this goes. Man, I haven't actually played. It's been a bit. This will be an adventure. Oh, Mediterranean. At least we're playing double Egyptian on Meta. Oh, this is fun. Skip on you, be out, yow, something, you be out. I guess that was not meant to be. Looks like I'm not fast proxy with anyone. Whatever. Dial up internet. I don't have dial up internet anymore. I don't think this Fury Rubench guy knows what's going on. Yeah, Mediterranean with me at store was very. I don't know how that would have gone for me. All right, let's go. Let's go. It's now. Dang it, it's 11 10. Oh, so I missed Cypher Admin long ago. Said, What's up? Miss Port sorry, Cypher, I missed you. Where did these guys go? <laughs> you think of the Ethernet cable for the win if you were gonna lose. <laughs> Was this confessions? Seventeen years later? Oh man, we might have to call this a night. Did these guys go out or what? We're going to wait for a 3v3. This is getting older and older. Later and later, older and older, later and later. <laughs> oh my, I don't even know if I'm going to get another game in. Uh, I hate to end the stream at like a dwindling. You know, kind of a fizzling out stream where nobody's, I'm not playing a game, but... We'll find out. <sighs> well, I can relax now. The, the tournament is over. I have no more tournament games to cast. I used to play in 28.8. 
<laughs> it lagged a little bit sometimes. Until it lagged out and counted as a quit for the opponent. Yeah. I think actually that might actually still work on Boobly. Well, Ozone snuck in the game. How would I make some units here? One thing I the only thing that I did that was ever slightly cheating was that back in the day the Norwegian version of Age of Mythology would oftentimes out of sync when someone used tornado. So once I was playing a couple of Norwegians and the one guy was being kind of an ass. He was kind of gloating that he won in a team game when my team, my ally was awful. So <laughs> I aged up Horus on purpose and used Tornado so the game went out of sync. That it pissed him off. It was worth it too. I, I had no regrets and I still have no regrets. That guy was an ass. Con Black was his name. K-O-N was a clan for kings of Norway. And that guy was a complete jerk. And I showed him. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have had the Norwegian copy of the game that you couldn't cast. Couldn't play with Tornado and make it go out of sync half the time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I forgot about that. I just remembered. That was long, long ago. <laughs> the knaves of Norway. <laughs> Most of them are pretty nice dudes. But that guy was that guy was a jerk. I don't know what his problem was, but oh. So what do I do on this map anyway? Yes, Meat Hook was Khan as well. He probably would remember Khan Black. Oh, I forgot I got that technology that makes him kill animals right away. Rating cap. Yeah. You're right. You have to really get damage, though, with rating cap early. Are there any cavalry relics? I am not seeing any. I could get this Pegasus relic, I guess. It's like the closest one that's decent. Get me a free scout. Okay, these guys are almost done with that. Oh, I should probably wall this off. Or how about I just do it like this? It's a little bit longer than I anticipated. Yo. Yeah. Okay, we can age up now. What's that run? A pair of golden lions. Yeah. Hmm. There actually is going to be another relic right in here. What did she say? I don't even remember what I said. No. What I've learned 
<laughs> when I play these games, it's like I often will like say like the first three, like first three or four words of a thought, and I just I just never finish. <laughs> That's what she also said. <laughs> oh, why are you wandering around like that? I thought there'd be another relic. Oh, it's a little longer than I anticipated. <laughs> well, that was disappointing. Oh, it's only a 2v2, that's why. Alright. Oh, ozone is Egyptian. What's Ozone doing with like the He's gonna come to that town center. I'm probably too slow. I needed to get a town center sooner. Bet a lot of idle town center time too. Oh, he has not noticed this. Why does my town center stop making units over and over and over? Yeah, 
He's actually going to have villies up here somewhere. What is he doing? This isn't what I meant. That was strange. Oh, how would I go to this side here? No, what are you doing fighting that? That is terrible. Where are these guys? Unfortunately, I cannot quite. Tilbuen. 
Uh, I'm not gonna be able to stop that. Where's Red getting his gold from? Something. I could probably do a rag, actually. Okay, cool. He wasted that. Eighty one hit points. I think I got swinery. Yeah, I do. I made three food. Tilbuen, yeah, 
I just don't want to lose my units. That's the big thing. I don't know why he didn't finish this wall here. <laughs> Norse, n not really. Kind of. It Norse is pretty tough to do in a 1v1, though. No, what do I really care about this? The thing with Norse is that you have to be able to... Um, you have to be able to like fight on multiple fronts, and that can be hard to do on one v one. Oh wow! Look at this. The way to win is just to decimate red. I don't know why red never got his, uh... Oh, that sucks. Whatever. I still gotta walk anyway. Oh, why the leaves right right away, huh? Or flaming weapons right away, huh? Well, maybe we can wait. Rake is so cheesy. Red kind of like had green on the back foot early. I don't know what happened to green later. Norse, the problem with Norse is in then 1v1 <laughs> make fire swords. There's a lot of 
each god really kind of has a way that they can that they can pick on Norse. Like Greek has like the gold block with restoration. Uranos has that really early aggression that um Uranos has that really early aggression that you can't really deal with early as um Norse or you I mean, is tough. And then e Egyptian matches up pretty decently against Norse overall. Um so outside of like Odin who has like a good matchup against Uranos there's just like a few things in each matchup that you can kind of take advantage of and kind of really pick on the uh the Norse. Um but they're they're all right. Like they're not that far off. Just just the way they are. Just there's always that Oh, look, there was a relic up here, and I missed it. The Oldsburg Wagon. There's just like a one way to get it. What did he shift sand these units, or how do they get down there? <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, it's just... Norse has to... And then in the team games, they're so good, Norse are overall, is because Norse excel in chaos, and it's so easy to make it... A team game chaotic um, whereas a 1v1 with the map so much smaller it's hard to like spread out as your Norse and like attack from multiple sides which is kind of what the Norse needs to do generally once you're Norse and you're fighting like straight up one front you're probably going to lose which that's often what happens in a 1v1 is just because the way the maps are so much smaller you can't really get that multiple front ozone says i'm lucky it's not like i just attacked red most of the game <laughs> you were playing sim city over there ozone with your 22 minute attack need to be a little faster my man i don't know what happened to red he seemed like he was kind of slow to get town well he got an early town center I did like Green's suicidal attack early on, but I guess it worked because we won. But anyway, that's it for tonight, guys. It's going to be about uh, about four days before my next stream. Um, and we're well, obviously, it's going to be a little bit different because now that now the, um, the Bill Gregg Open is done, I don't have as many recorded games to stream, so it's going to be a little bit different. We'll try to find some other things to do. I've had a few people contact me about doing some other uh, events and maybe smaller tournaments. A few more minutes to delete you from the map. Yeah, but 30 more seconds and your ally is deleted. It's a team game, man. You let your ally get smoked. Magyar versus Mr. A painting stream. <laughs> I should have streamed when I painted this room. Uh, at the end of last year. But yeah, we'll, we'll we'll come up with some ideas. We could do some older recorded games too, um, if there's a few that you guys want. Um, maybe do that. Uh, but uh, there's always ideas. I'll probably take a no body paint. We'll probably take a little bit of not stream quite as much. Just a little bit of an AOT break, just because. Pretty much every night I've been off, I was streaming um, recorded games and such. So it'd be nice to slow it down a little bit for a couple weeks. Um, but we'll see. I also like the interaction because it's fun. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And I will catch all of you some other time. Have a good weekend or a good week. I guess it's... Not quite the weekend yet. It's only Wednesday. Have a good rest of your week and stay healthy. That's the big thing nowadays. Stay healthy, my friends. And goodbye.